Cage Time with John Morgan. And welcome everybody. Another episode of Cage Side with John Morgan. I'm your host, Eric McMahon. Let's set the rundown. Tabora gets a W. Mike Tyson books a fight with Jake Paul. And then we're going to look forward to some other events, some cool things coming forward to help break it all down. He had a birthday just this past week. He didn't cover the UFC as a journalist. He did as a fight fan sitting, drinking some frosty beverages. His name is John Morgan. Follow him on Twitter, John Morgan underscore MMA. What up, brother? Hey, I'm good, man. You know, a year older, which I never like uh, celebrating wiser. too much. <laughs> well, there you go. A year wiser. I like, I'm stealing that one right away. Uh, but no, it was good. You know, it, it was fun. I mean, obviously, uh, the journalist slash media hat, I guess, is always going to be on to some degree. But it was nice to just be able to unplug. Man, I didn't have my computer in front of me. I, I thought about taking some notes on my phone from the fight card. It was unfolded. I said, you know what, man? This is my weekend. I have my wife with me. I have my son with me. I was like, let's just hang out and watch some fights. And uh, it was fun, man. It's fun to get to do that every now and then. And it was wild because we were actually seated right next to uh, the seats that the, the UFC was using as the Blue Corners family. So all night long, we're sitting next to, you know, moms and dads and sisters and brothers. And, man, you know how intense that is. I mean, it's yeah. just you get that reminder of, of what's at stake and how much is on the line. I mean, this is their loved one's dreams at stake. You're just you're just having a frosty beverage, enjoying yourself, having a good time. And they're seeing, like, the hopes and dreams of their loved ones on the line. It's it's an intense reminder, but it but it was a it was a fun night. I'll never forget that being in the apex because it's so intimate. Is that when I was sitting in the in the officials essentially bullpen, right? Mm-hmm. The officials bullpen. I'm sitting not five feet from Michelle Waterson's family in that epic brutalization that she took in her last fight, and her daughter's yep. crying, you know, and I, I believe her sister and her mom were there consoling the daughter while like you know, just, it, yeah, I, I understand. Like, and, and, and unless anybody's ever really watched their family member go to battle, you don't really have a frame of reference of what John is talking about. Well, you know, fortunately and unfortunately, I guess I do. And, um, man, it's, it's, it's a wild scene to see. It really is. It's just a stark reminder of kind of what's at stake. I mean, as much as we love this, and it is a sport, I mean, there's no doubt about it, right? Combat sports is a sport. It's a discipline. But, man, you know, they're putting their bodies on the line. And, and, and again, it's, it's so much changes. You know, a win propels you forward. A loss sets you back. It could be your last fight on a contract. It could be, you know, what sets you up for a title shot. And there's so many things at stake. And, uh, man, those loved ones just feel helpless. You know what I mean? They, yeah. they want to help. You know how it is. You want to help your, your, your siblings, your, your, your wife, your parents whatever you want and you can't there's literally nothing you do. they're locked inside a cage door and you are locked on the other side of it helpless to do anything it's, it's a wild scene to see so um it was uh, it's it's an intense reminder but it was uh, still an enjoyable night for sure well on that night uh marcin tabora wins via rear naked choke over tai tuavasa in the main event of the ufc fight night this past weekend the one spot he couldn't engage in was the stand-up he didn't engage there the one spot that Ty, uh, Ty, uh, I'm getting my words all jumbled. <laughs> Ty Bora, Ty Tuiva. There's a Ty lot of ties and could not engage in was the ground needed to keep it standing up. Obviously, we know which way that went. So, listen, uh, Tuvasa's last fight prior to this was the other destruction that Aspinall put on him mm-hmm. very early, one minute into round one. Right. This seemed like a good matchup on paper. Hey, it's two guys coming off of losses. Does I, this is a weird question for me to ask now? Like, how much does this win do for him? Because Tai Tuavasa is coming off of now what I believe that's his fourth or fifth straight loss. It, it was a weird, weird, I'm not going to say weird pairing because it could have made for a great fight, but. Is, or is it just like one, hey, let's put people that people, let's put fighters that people want to see as the main event. Is that more yeah. of what this was? I kind of think it was. And, and I, you hate to say it that way because obviously, man, wins are important, right? I mean, obviously half a paycheck is on the line. That's big. And it keeps you relevant. But yeah, to your point, I don't think there's a lot of movement in this one. I mean, coming in, Tai Tuivasa was ranked number nine. Marcin Tabura was ranked number 10. So you got to imagine at a minimum, they'll flip-flop. Maybe Tabura will slide up a little bit more. You got Sergey Spivak at number eight. Jelton Almeida at number seven. I don't know if he'll go flying past them. But, it, it, you know. Maybe it, Almeida. Uh, 
maybe I made it. It's possible. It, it certainly is. So I'll be interested to see the, the rankings update that comes out this week. But yeah, this is not one that now you go, okay, now we know what's next. You know, now we yeah. know there's a title online. It was just, it was just kind of a fight, a main event, you know? Um, so not a lot of upside for Martin Tibura. And if, if I'm going to be honest with you, I don't think a ton of downside for Ty Tuavasa either. I mean, as you mentioned, his fourth straight loss, that's unfortunate. Four straight stoppages. It's not yeah, good. that's what I was about to bring up. It was not just but, his fourth straight loss. But he's so popular. You know what I mean? Physically, yeah, you might be saying. But as far as like where he stands, contractually speaking, popularity speaking, that's not going anywhere. People love Ty Tuavasa. I can tell you everybody in the Apex was pulling for that guy on Saturday night. <laughs> I'm doing <It's>, my shimmy. <laughs> so th- you kind of jumped the shark on me there a little bit because does does there are many many and let's say the vast majority of fighters that they're living fight to fight because a ramification of a loss or a poor showing or however you want to phrase it is is the difference between being cut or being retained you know fighting out your contract to no second contract or being re-upped right then and there to a new three, five fight contract. I don't think Ty Tuavasa is in that list. He, to me, and again, I've got no business connection to the UFC whatsoever. He just seems the type of fighter that fans will always want to see. I put him in, in regards of, um, you know, somebody almost like a Tony Ferguson, not that esteemed. Right, not as esteemed as a Tony Ferguson, but Tony Ferguson's coming off six, seven losses now. And people yeah. will still want to watch him fight. I view Tai Tuavasa is that same realm of fighters. Would I be correct? I think you're spot on. And and yeah, you know, like I said, it, maybe I moved forward a little fast there, but I just didn't feel like Marcin Tabura really gained much here. And I think the real question is what does Tai Tuavasa lose? But I think you hit the nail on the head there. I'm with you. Tai Tuavasa, I don't think lost anything. His popularity is such that people love the personality, right? I mean, you were doing the little shimmy dance that he's got. We know when he wins. It's been a little while since we got to see it, but when he wins, we get to see the big shoey that everybody loves. I mean, it's incredible to see it in an arena, how many shoes go up in the air, people volunteering, trying to get him to drink the beer out of their shoe. It's hilarious to see, and I just think he's probably – and he's got that fighting style that everybody loves, right? I mean, you and I, of course, we're the hardcores. We get into subtle, nuanced grappling games, and we love a little guard play, and we're seeing... But let's be honest, the the casual MMA fan that doesn't know the sport that well may not understand those sequences. When Tai Tuivasa comes out there throwing bombs, like, you don't need to understand anything about the sport to just know that that's fun. That dude's out there trying to wreck people and, and, and knock people out. So And he's willing to get wrecked in the pursuit yes. of wrecking. That's right. It's just going to be amazing. fun, right? We're just we're just throwing down. We're going to see what happens. We're going yeah. and throwing down, and we're going to see what happens. Head look. movement is for the birds. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. What are we doing that for? And look, he got a couple shots in early, right? I mean, he did land. He busted Marcin up a little bit. And he thought, uh-oh, maybe he's back. And... And, you know, I do think he is taking it seriously. I mean, I think some people question his commitment to it. But, I mean, it does seem like he understands what's on the line and, and trying to take his training seriously. I, you know, I don't know how far he's going to develop as, as a mixed martial artist in terms of adding wrinkles to his game. But he's fun. He's exciting. So, I would be shocked. And then there's, you know, there's the other aspect, too, of any time – you know, a, a fighter is tied to a foreign nation. That helps too, right? When you're trying to, to, to keep popularity in certain markets. Obviously, you know, New South Wales, Australia, West Side Sydney. I mean, that's that's him. He's representing all day. So um, I think he's in, you know, I, I don't know that he's going to get the most meaningful fights moving forward. You know, maybe that's his last main event for a while. I mean, there was a time not that long ago we were talking about, man, is this guy a, a, a fighter two away from a title shot? I mean, I think he that, was. that's all. His he, zero gone fight. He exactly. Was. You know what I mean? And it's crazy to think that now. So we're definitely not in that position anymore. But I just think the guy is too popular, too fun um, for the UFC to, to, to send him on his way. And if he does, I mean, certainly I think his services will be in high demand with with other uh, you know organizations out there. But I just don't see the UFC cutting bait on this one, man. And, and nor do I. I mean, maybe if, if, if we add two more onto this, but the UFC is smart enough to say, OK, now. You know, here's a Jamal Prong type yeah. guy. I, I, yeah, I think I think that's what you got to do now is just got to understand, hey, maybe it's time to hit the reset button. And hopefully Ty is okay with that. I mean, you know, look, we've seen it over the years. Sometimes you'll have a fighter that they kind of ask to take a step back and they'll say, you know what, man, if I'm not, 
you know, if I'm not fighting the absolute best in the world, I'm just not interested in doing this. I don't think that's the case. I think Ty just loves to do this and is supporting a family. And is like, hey, man, if you're going to pay me to do it, I will face anybody you put on the other side of the cage. So I imagine he'll probably be okay with it. But yeah, I think I think that's the approach you do now. It's like, let's take a step back. Let's get outside the rankings a little bit. You know, I think Ty's probably still going to be featured in the rankings. I don't think he's going to fall out yet, but maybe the next opponent is somebody that's on the outside. And listen, Mick Maynard, the UFC matchmakers, man, they know what they're doing. They know stylistically what kind of fighter to put in there with them. I mean, and, and look, does it does an average fan want to see Ty Tuivasa against a Division One wrestling champion? Like, no, we want to see somebody that's going to go in there and throw hands with them too. And I think yeah, that's and I'm what sure you get. It, and I'm sure me and you can sit here and break down, obviously, where the deficiency are is in his game. You know, the one, but there's no point, right? There's not a point. It's glaringly obvious. Okay, yep. one, he's got to uh, reach. Uh, uh, he has to overcome ninety percent of the time. He has to over overcome a massive reach difference. Right. And and then with that being said, he has to do a lot of lunging for those big shots, which is always going to leave a fighter like him prone to be taken down. And then it's fish out of water at that point. You know, it's very hard to to cram 10 years or 20 years worth of experience into a training camp. It just doesn't happen. Right. So right. with that being said, um, I, not much to talk, uh, touch on, but somebody that you still want to see fight moving forward for all the reasons that we just said, but something that I do want to touch on, you know, looking ahead is in the apex this coming weekend. Again, we, we have another fight night. Uh, are you going to be in the building? I'll be there for that one. Yes, sir. This, this right, time I'll be in a more official capacity. There we go. Non-frosty beverage at the table, right? That'll be <laughs> yes, later. Correct. Uh, Amanda Rebos versus Thug Rose at the Apex this weekend. And I, I just look at this as th this is a huge, and I can't emphasize how big of an opportunity this really is for Amanda Rebos. And, and, and there's... It's almost like I don't want to put it into the same category as Dustin Poirier and um, and uh, Benoit Saint Denis last week, but it's almost somebody you'd be like, okay, I'm going to give you that opportunity, and I almost put it in that same realm because there's very little upside for Thug. There's tons, tons of upside for Amanda Rivas, and and she is a legitimate threat here. A hundred percent. I think that's I think that's a fair way of looking at it. I mean, Amanda Hebus has kind of been, you know, really she's been between divisions. She's been, you know, ranked at 115, ranked at 125, but you know, she'll take a few steps up and then she'll slide back. You know, she she had the loss to Macy Barber, she had the loss to Caitlin Chukagian along the way. There was the Marina Rodriguez fight as well. So every time she takes a step forward, she ends up sliding back. So right. this is by far the biggest name value opportunity for her to have. I mean, Doug Rose, Nami Yunus. You know, a, a couple of setbacks as well on, on her own. Maybe, maybe potentially, you know, at a crossroads, but certainly a much bigger Quit star. jumping my shot, on Morgan. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's a big opportunity. But she brings something to the table. She's a former champion, man. She's one. I mean, she is such a recognizable figure. So this is absolutely a big opportunity. And Amanda Hebus um, is, is a dangerous opponent. So this... This is, this is a big one. This is a big one for Amanda Hebus. So is she really that person that we think she can be? Because she's she's shown glimpses of it along the way, but then she gets to that big spot and slides back just a little bit. We'll see if she can break through this time. Yeah, and I, and I just keep on looking at it from a standpoint of, you know, motive and what's to gain. And they're really, you know, other than to get back on the winning track, I don't see much to gain here from uh, Thug Rose other than – you know, one, it's a payday, and then things are coming into question, you know, about about her future. And so I'm not going to say a hot take here when we say, you know, Thug Rose is a little bit all over the place in, like, what her motivation in fighting really is. I mean, she's historically said, like, the anxiety that she gets going into fight and that in that it might not be like a deep love for her because of the nerves that's associated with it. I don't know what her path forward is anymore. And so that's why I just look at this fight as saying, Hey, is this something she's just kind of fighting out? I, I, I don't want to discourage or uh, say anything, but you know, if we're looking past, uh, you know, since Wei Li Zhang, which is in two 2021, 
She's only had a fight a year since then. Yep. No, and, and listen, I mean, the, the, the loss to Carla Esparza, obviously that was, you know, a, a widely panned fight, like not a great performance And I didn't want to bash, I didn't want to bash it right there, so I kind of just left it out, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. and you don't want to because R Rose is such a, a, a beloved figure, right? I mean, she's, she's uh, you know, open and honest about everything, about her struggles, you know, about everything that she's gone through, and she's just such a nice human being. I mean, she's just amazing to be around, but you think about – uh, you know, but but if you're being honest, you know that performance was not great, and that, that that was something that you'd be willing to say to somebody's face. It's just the truth. It was it was not a, a, a widely loved fight, but it, but what you said is so true, and it, it's such a hard position to be in. And I don't think a, a lot of people maybe can relate to this. But I mean, imagine because the anxiety that comes with fighting is insane. And listen, every fighter feels it to some degree, um, some more than others, but all like nobody doesn't feel the anxiety at all. You know, they do a good job of masking it sometimes, but it's a scary thing to do. Normal people don't do this for a living. But then if you're in a position like Rose, you know, she's been a martial artist her entire life. She's really damn good. She's just naturally talented at it. You know what I mean? And and you know, I, I don't know what her, her business prospects are and what investments she's made financially and things like that, but there's not a lot of things you can do in life that come with a paycheck the size of what, you know, the top stars can make in a fight, right? So can you imagine that here you are, at, you know, you're, you're not at, at retirement age, you wouldn't think at 31 years old, right? But the thing that you have the ability to most financially benefit yourself from and the thing that perhaps you're most best that in your life is also the thing that scares you the most and causes you the most stress and frustration and anxiety in your life. It's kind of a, a tortured existence. You know what I mean? And so, you know, when I touched on saying that, Hey, I think this is kind of a crossroads fight for Rose Nama Yunus. I honestly just meant in terms of where she stands in the division is flyweight really where she needs to be, or does she need to consider moving back to 115? those kind of things. But I think what you're touching on is right. You know, we've seen kind of a, you know, a, a I don't want to say a loss of passion or maybe just a questioning of where she wants to be in her life. So this might be a crossroads, you know, entirely in terms of career, of whether she wants to keep doing this or not. And, and, and sometimes it's not always win or lose. It helps you decide whether you want to keep doing it. It's how you feel in it, how you feel around it. So, um, yes, this is the, the, the big stakes, I think, at play for both these athletes, even if it's not necessarily a number one contender fight or, or booking the next title fight next. Okay, with everything that we just talked about, because I think it is fair to say, because we're not the ones who's brought up anxiety issues. We're right. not the ones who's brought this up. And that's one of the reasons we love her. Mm -hmm. Aside from that is that she is as transparent as can be. She's going to say what she wants, albeit if it creates any controversy, whatever, she's going to say it. And she's not going to say it in a dogmatic, talking crap way. She's just like, this is the way I feel about it, right? Yep. And I think everybody can respect that. And and and, and she's very endearing for it. Um, but let's say she does, she does have the passion still. Let's say she, uh, you know, wants to keep fighting, overcoming that anxiety. And that's a lot of, and, and we have to say that. A lot of people fight to overcome anxiety. It's always a battle for them, and they're better for it in the cage, in life, and that could be a case here, and that's why she manifests it and says it so much. It gives her fuel to overcome it, which is a real thing as well. But let's just say all things equal, she has a passion. She wants to move forward. Is this a must win? Who, You know, if, it, if it's going to be – and, and, you know, it's funny because we talked about Ty Tuivasa being somebody that would probably just fight anybody you put on the other side of the cage. I don't know that Rose Namajunas is that person. I, I think she's – if she wants to do it, she wants to do it at the highest level and, and do the very best because she knows how difficult it is and she doesn't want to go out there just to go through the motions. So in many ways, maybe, yeah, because if she loses this one, I, I don't know – where she stands. I mean, she's not in the rankings at 125 pounds. And I'll be honest with you. I find that a little bit surprising. I get it. She just moved divisions. She lost in her debut. I still found a place for her in my rankings at 125 because I just don't think you throw away the entire body of work at 115 just because she's moving up, especially when what she lost to was the number one contender at the time in, in Manon Firo. Um, so I think you got to put her in there somewhere. But if she loses here again, I mean, are, are the rankings panelists that didn't put her in the rankings last time going to put her in the rankings this time? I don't know. And now 
can you headline another event? Uh, you know, I mean, well, on, on three straight losses, maybe we talk about the popularity. Look, she's exciting, too. I, I know we, the, the, the one fight wasn't great with Esparza, but for the most part, she's usually fun to watch. So maybe, but yeah, I don't know. This feels like a, a pretty big, important spot for her because if she comes up short here, I just don't know that there's any other matchups that necessarily scream out as like needing to be made for the organization. And then you also wonder wherever you should, should you know, if they say, Hey, we, we just got this 22 year old newcomer, you know, coming from a uh, contender series. Uh, that's the matchup we'd like to make for you. What do you think? I just don't know that I see her getting excited by that and saying, yeah, let's, let's go through it and let's do that. So it may very well be. Yeah. Uh, in, in every fight, you look at somebody, you know, Mike, 90% of the time, it's just instinctual and gut. Like, I want this person to win, and I want this person to lose. Right. That's not this fight. Yep, I was Amanda Hibas is, like, literally, like, you just want to – she's inherently likable. Like, she's so excited to be there. Win or lose, she is just so excited to take part, right? Is, and then you have the thug. happiest person. The, happiest the, 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 person. the laugh is, is there all the time. You're right. And then, and then Thug Rose. And then Thug Rose, who we all we have all grown to love Thug Rose, right? So yep. I, I guess it puts us fans in a very tough spot on Saturday night. It really does. I, I I don't know who to pull for in this one, man. I mean, like you said, normally you're like, ah, oh, like you know, you kind of want to see this storyline happen or this storyline unfold. And I, I mean, do you, do you cheer for a draw? You're like, hey, man, hopefully they just come out there and have fun. They they have a draw, and, and yeah. Dana decides to give them both a win bonus as well. So let's do that. Yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> um, this past uh, this past week at the uh, Arnold Sports uh, Festival in England, John Jones was making an appearance there. In addition to John Jones making an appearance. Uh, Aspinall made an appearance there. And wouldn't you guess the cameras were there when they're across paths. Did you get a chance to see this? I mean, the cameras are always going to be there in this day and age. There's no more just, you know, it's either, it's either the fighters professional crew following themselves or at least a fan cell phone. Like everything is getting videoed. And yes, I saw the interaction and yes, uh, I, I, I got a little bit excited, not too excited. Cause I know it doesn't mean anything right now, but, but I, I, I love seeing those guys together. I love seeing the conversation happening. And in Aspinall being very complimentary while do it, I still think he comes off as the heel. Like I gotta look at everything as like uh wrestling, like a baby face and a heel. Sure. Like who's who's the 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 provocateur and the provo provocateur, right? Um or E and or. There we go. Um <laughs> And Aspinall seeks out John Jones to ask him, hey, are we going to do this? And John Jones in very nice, but yet John Jones condescending way says, yeah, I really hope we can do this sometime. You know, and almost like just with a smile on his face and Aspinall's like, I would just love the opportunity, you know, you know, hope to get the opportunity. I'd love the opportunity to face off against you someday. And he's like, yeah, yeah, man. man Maybe we could do that sometime. And then Aspinall puts his hand, like you know, when Aspinall in the pre-fight, he always puts his hand on his opponent's shoulder. Yep. He yep. does that to John Jones. Yeah. John Jones looks at him and is like, uh-uh. 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 <laughs> that made me chuckle. And then Aspinall, almost fanboy, says, Hey, do you mind if we take a picture together? And John Jones is like, Yeah, not a problem. And he goes, Can we face off? And John Jones goes, No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it was like it was. It was it was the most awkwardly fun interaction you could watch. And if you haven't seen it, go check it out because it's 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 a hoot. It is absolutely worth checking out. There's so much going on there. There's so much to uh, to break down and to look at. But you know it's funny. I mean, look, John Jones has made a career out of big brothering people, right? I mean, that's just what he does. And look, he's earned the right to do that. That that man to me is the greatest of all time. I, I believe he is the goat. Um, and, and so he's been, he has earned the right to kind of be a little bit cocky at, at times and to make it seem like, Hey, maybe you can come at me. Maybe you can't. Meanwhile, I love Tom Aspinall because Tom Aspinall has honestly been saying John Jones name for a long time, not just when he got to the top. And he always said, he always said it with respect, to be honest with you. It was, it was not so much like, Hey, I'm calling him out. It's more like, I just, I think that dude's the best but I think I can beat him and I want to test myself in there and I want to prove it. You know what I mean? So I think Aspinall has always been very respectful about the way he does it. But I think the other thing about Tom Aspinall is he gets the game too, right? He's a smart guy, man. He understands 
closed mouths don't get fed, right? I, I got to stir the pot a little bit. And I'm not going to go out of character, which I love that. And when I say out of character, I mean out of like your moral values, not out of the quote unquote character you've created. You're not going to go outside of who you are. Tom Aspinall is being who he is, but you know you got to you got to turn it up a little bit. You know what I mean? You could you could go to this the same festival and be like, well, I, I don't want to be disrespectful of the guy. He's here doing an appearance. I'm not going to show up over there. You know, maybe we'll, no. You got to go out of your way, and you got to get with them a little bit, and you got to put the hand on. And you got to ask for a face off. You know, you got to try because, you know, people see the face off all of a sudden now. They're like, oh, I got to see that fight. And look, I've seen a lot of people that are saying, I want to see this fight over John Jones versus Steve A. Miocic. And I'm in that camp. <laughs> I'm totally in the camp. I'm, I think me and you all, I, I, you know, we've talked about this and I still feel the same way. I understand why the UFC is kind of insisting on John Jones and Steve Bay. I understand. Why John is insisting on Steve Bay, why Steve Bay is insisting on John. So I understand from all parties involved why that fight is the one that's happening. But man, I, I do hope this Aspinall one does unfold. I would completely get it if John Jones says, listen, man, I've done everything. I've proved everything. My heart's not in this anymore. Let this young buck step up and 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 you know, he can have the throne next, you know, have fun with it. But boy, you know, and, and, and wouldn't it be fun for John Jones to be like, you know what? Not only am I the GOAT now, but I'm going to prove that I'm still the GOAT for another generation. So this is the guy that you say is the next champion? Well, guess what? I'm going to beat him so that for the next 10 years when this dude is reigning over the division, you'll always remember he was good, but he couldn't beat me. And, man, what a way to just extend the legendary GOAT status, should he so choose. It's one of the reasons we look at Floyd Mayweather the way we do. He took out Canelo Alvarez. Now, Canelo Alvarez was still young in his career, but he was that budding next guy superstar. Floyd is aging out. Floyd took him out, and that's what Floyd did, marketing genius. But So depending on the ego that John Jones has, let's see if that, that comes to fruition. But it was just – I mean, yeah, to say you know Aspinall did come across humble, but with an agenda. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with a hundred percent agenda, right? And he wanted that face off, and he wanted to say, "I want this fight." And he he had his he had his. I mean, because he very easily could have just went up and said, "Hey, champ, just wanted to shake your hand uh, and, and say, hey, you know, best of luck. Hope to see you down the road." It's not no. what he did, though. He gets it. He's smart. He understands. I've got to create these things. I've got to create these moments. And when you watch, I mean, look, he's he's already basically said, look, I, he's resolved himself to the fact that this Stipe fight is going to happen, right? Tom is, is he, for a while, he was saying, I think I should step in. Now he said, no, okay. But you watch how this thing continues to unfold. If John beats Stipe in a, in a lot of ways, the way that people think he's he will. in the cage. A hundred percent, you know, and, and the thing, and he's look, he's always going to do it with respect, but it's going to be like, hey, respectfully, champ. I mean, you're going to ride off into the sunset when the next guy is right here. I mean, here's your chance. You're that good. You know what I mean? I'm that guy. You Don't you want to yeah. prove that? I mean, I'm, you know what I mean? Like, it's going to be that. And he's going to keep poking at him. And look, you know, you touch John's ego. Listen, man, John, ha John has earned the right to walk away and say, look, I'm the greatest that ever did this. Don't ever call my phone again. You know who the goat is. But, man, you know that there's got to be a little bit of an itch inside. And there's like, what? Everybody says this is the guy? People are thinking this dude could beat me? Are they serious? No way. I'm going to go out there and prove that's impossible. So, I think it'll be awfully hard. For, I mean, what if John goes out there and, and I, look, I don't, the last thing I'm sitting here trying to do is disrespect Stipe Miocic, but what if John makes quick work of him? What if John is able to dominate the fight the way he did against Cyril Gaunt? You know, not saying it'll happen, but what if he does? You're telling me that he's not going to be like, all right, one more. We got we to gotta address this young buck. We got to address this one that everybody says is the next me because he ain't. I think it would be awfully hard for him to just walk away. Now, if it's a battle and a war and he barely wins and he's hurt and his, you know, his, his legs yeah. always are hurt after fights, then maybe he's like, whew, I'm just done. I put enough money in the bank. If this is the new guy, then let him be the guy, and I wish him the best. He's got a whole lot of title defenses to rack up before he can start talking about my legacy. So, you know, I can see it going either way, but that, the fan in me, I love seeing those two guys interact together. And again, John doesn't owe anybody anything. I want to make that painfully clear. He doesn't have to do anything. But if he wants to do it, sign me up. Take my money. I'm sitting cage side for that one. Let's go. I want to see it. Any timeline on John right now? 
N- nothing official that we've heard. I mean, it just he's healing up and getting back, and we still don't have a date yet for that fight yet. I, I, I circling Madison Square Garden, maybe. I mean, later in the year, I think that's kind of what it was looking now that we know that you know the three hundred didn't happen. It doesn't look like the international fight week, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, n- nothing in stone yet. Roger that. Um, I, I, we need to get into Jake Paul, Mike Tyson, but I, 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 I read something somewhere. I don't know the context. I don't know the backstory. I don't know if this is even true or not. I want to hear if you heard it. Is that Habib said, well, I'm not done coaching. I'm just done cornering. Did you hear that? I did hear that. Yeah. yeah. He, okay. he saw, look, yeah, he's always, he's always in the gym, man. He's always working with his team and, and wants to be a part of his team. He just doesn't necessarily want to be on the road every weekend the way you have to, you know, like these high-level coaches that are gone every weekend. So is that an absolute? Like, I'm not even going to coach. I'm not even going to corner. Because I, I, when – and I say that because I always think of Mahashev and I think of, you know, his, his upper brass guys. Right. Right? Yeah. I look at it and being like – because Habib doesn't talk in subjectivities. He always speaks in absolutes. So is that an absolute? Like, I ain't even going. I know he hasn't been in Mahashev's corner, but he did a retire from coaching before. Yeah. Now he's kind of walked that back a little bit. So do you think we could see him in, in a corner of a Mahashev at some point? I wouldn't I, I wouldn't say that it's impossible. Yeah, I would say that it's, it's very possible if it, you know if the magnitude of the fight is right, if the situation is right. I mean, heck, you know, maybe the UFC is doing an event in in Dagestan at some point or you know, one of the caucus regions over there or maybe it's just this huge super fight of some nature. So I would say it's not like one of those things where like, you know, with fighting, he said straight up like I promised my family like I was done and and I will leave it at that. You know what I mean? I promised my mom I was done. This one I I don't think it's so much he's promised anybody he's done. It's just you know, he just didn't want to be on the road every weekend like it takes to be. But I think maybe in the right circumstances, we could see him back in the corner. And the only reason I bring it up is because I think everybody's better when we get to see Habib in the corner or Habib somewhere man. around the UFC. He's still got that aura about him, man. When Habib shows up and he's in the building, man, people people feel it, man. He's just got that respect about him. So, yeah, I, I agree. I'd love to see it. Again, it's one of those things that if he doesn't want to and he just doesn't have the pass, look, he's always going to be up. He's always in the training room. He's always watching fights, breaking down fights. Like, he loves – you know, the science behind it all. So he's always going to be a part of the sport. But yeah, the more that we can have him out there visible and around, the better off we all are because he's a star, man, and people love being around him. So last week, shortly after we went off the air, Jake Paul and Mike Tyson is announced. Arlington Arlington Stadium, I believe, right? In Dallas, Texas. Yeah, at and uh, Stadium in Arlington. Yeah, home AT&T. of the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot to unpack here, and we don't have a lot of time, but I do want to unpack imp- unpack a couple things. 27-year-old Jake Paul, 57-year-old Mike Tyson. Initial, just initial thoughts. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't love it. Um, you know, uh, listen. <laughs> Uh, the chance to see Mike Tyson again sounds enticing, and then you remember that it's a 58 year old. By the time he fights, he'll have a birthday celebrated in the next couple months. Mike Tyson, right? And uh, I've seen the training clips. I've seen the 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 five second you know footage clips, and they're awesome. The dude can still throw a punch. There's no doubt about it. I mean, Mike Tyson is an absolute legend of combat sports, and he he still got it. He still got that power. But you know, he doesn't have the gas tank of of, of a man. 30 years younger than he is and you know the longer this goes the younger it's going to look and we know that he's been you know partaking a lot of the product that he sells out there along the ways and i don't know what that necessarily does with your cardio he was using a cane just a few months ago yeah it's um i mean i'm 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 happy that he's getting a paycheck you know we know the ups and downs that he's had with his his financial life throughout his his superstar run where you know a lot was stolen from him and so if he can get some on the back end and make it back for him then i'm I'm, I'm all for it um I love the fact that this is streaming on Netflix I mean how about that it's not a pay-per-view this is this if you got Netflix which I think everybody does you're you're gonna have it available to you and that's just another uh, you know big money player getting into the combat sports game so I love that I can't fault Jake Paul right because 
you know, I, I've said this along the way that, you know, a lot of people are critical of the people that Jake Paul has fought and they say, when are you going to fight somebody real? But you know the boxing game. Man, you get to 20 and 0, 22 and 0 before you're fighting anybody that's even worth a damn. You know what I mean? That's just how boxing has always worked. You fight a bunch of cans on your way up. Jake has just been incredibly smart in his team about essentially selecting guys that aren't that talented in boxing. Um, but that have huge name value, so you want to tune in. The, the Ben Askrens of the world, the Tyron Woodleys of the world, of course, you know, Nate Diaz. He's done a phenomenal job doing that, and I think he's done it again here. I mean, saying that you're going to step up and fight Mike Tyson, that is unbelievable, but then you got to remember, it's a 57, 58-year-old Mike Tyson, so it's like, what are you really doing? But I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, this morning before we sat down to record, I was listening to the Howard Stern Show, and a caller called in, and Howard Stern was. I mean, you're you're talking about big. You talk about the mainstream attention that this is going to get, the eyeballs that this is going, the mainstream coverage that this is going to get. They don't ever talk about combat sports on a Howard Stern show, and I mean, they spend a segment on it. And 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 the caller was like, "Man, I think Mike's going to knock him out. I think I think the power that he has, man, he's going to teach this kid a lesson." And I'm sure a lot of people that don't watch combat sports or aren't experts in the field are probably like yeah this dude finally bit off more than he could chew mike's gonna knock him out and maybe he can that's the great thing about combat sports but man you know that's father time <laughs> father time undefeated right i mean 58 years old god come on man so i was on our with grind city media we have a live morning show uh, called uh, the jensica benson show right it's uh loosely centered around sports and then pop culture and normal morning source stuff. They brought me on. I was talking about O'Malley. And then they said, hey, we want to dive into Mike Tyson. Okay. So then I started making the point because they start healing on Jake Paul. I said, what do you think about this? I go, I think Jake Paul's a genius. Whether you love him or hate him, he's a genius. Why is he a genius? You know, and then they, they want to get into like, and I said, listen, if we're going to say anything other than people hating on him, other than you're jealous to one degree or another, then you're lying to yourself, Right. And then I made this point. I said, the reason, aside from being like Disney kid or YouTuber and not wanting those guys to get to, to legitimacy in a sport, it's jealousy ridden that he is getting there, right? First and foremost. Then, you know, the way he is doing it in the very heelish fashion, he wants you to not like him why he's doing it because he realizes he gets paid. So one, you're falling into it. I said, but from from traditionalists, why they don't like him is because he is doing the quiet part out loud. He is doing the quiet part in plain sight. And you touched on it. And I actually got into this. I'm not going to say heated. It's as heated as a comment section debate could get with a guy who came in and said, you need to get somebody who knows what they're talking about in combat sports. Eric doesn't know anything about, right? And I'm like, okay, well, one, we know that's not true. And he's like, because basically my point is, as I said, listen, Floyd Mayweather didn't fight anybody with any talent until he got to 20 and 0. And then the Floyd Mayweather that we know took off from there. And some, you know, some guy came in and he's like, this is your, now you're equating Jake Paul to Floyd Mayweather. I said, no, that's not what I'm doing. I'm just saying this is the quiet part that he's doing out loud. Right. And then he brought up, well, he fought so-and-so at this fight. And then I put, I screenshot it and I put it on. I go, oh, I go, sorry, 17 and 0, not 20. My fault. I was making a general observation. And I said, but what you don't like about him is that he is making tens of millions of dollars doing what honestly boxers are having to pay their opponents to do. That's another little hidden thing. You as, as you're being your own promoter. So you have to pay your own opponent. So right? true. I'm not saying it's fixed, but you do have to pay him. Yep. And so he is making so much money off this. And I said, you know, if you don't like the game, I, I, I'm sorry that I'm the one who has to educate it to you. It's not, I'm not lying about it. This is the way it is. And, and all he is doing with Mike Tyson or what he, he thinks he's doing at least is building that net name and brand and reputation off of Mike Tyson. And he's like, well, he's not working as hard as these other up and comers are Mike. How, I mean, one, I disagree with you, but two, there's no way to quantify that. You're saying that out of jealousy. 
That's all. 100%. 100%. I mean, look, you know, you make the comparison to Floyd Mayweather. I just, while you were doing that, I pulled up Mike Tyson's box rec. And if you ever want to see box rec is a great website uh, for looking up boxing records. I mean, great historians and, and, and got it all documented in his 11th pro fight, which this will be Jake Paul's 11th pro fight. He's nine and one. Mike Tyson fought a gentleman named Sterling Benjamin, who was five, six and one at Latham Coliseum where, you know, I mean, like, what I mean, he fought a guy that was five, six, and one. So th this this is this is what you do in boxing. You build your record against lesser competition, as you said. Jake and his team have just been geniuses about finding a way for this lesser competition to be names that matter. And I hate to say that about Mike Tyson. And does Mike Tyson have a puncher's chance? You damn right he does. He's still Mike Tyson. And early Mike on, look, freaking Tyson. But he even Dana hard. White knows. Even Dana White knows. He saw it. You know, he didn't want to get into it too much because he has so much respect for Mike and he loves Mike as a person and as an athlete. But he, he knows it's not it's not a good matchup. They know exactly what they're doing here. But you're right. I mean, look, by, by all indications I've ever seen of Jake Paul is that he is absolutely not working as hard. Like, get out of here. That dude is dedicated. The, the point I was making is the guy, he – he may do things that people think are illegitimate to get to this point. I said, but make no mistake about it. He wants to be known as a complete legitimate fighter. He's That's just it. working this route till he gets there. It's 100%. I mean, look, when he was coming out at 2-0 saying, look, I'd beat Canelo right now. I mean, like, uh, no, you you would not, sir. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I get the fact you got to have your, your, your eyes on the prize that high and have those goals. And he is trying to do things the right way. I mean, I get why he's not popular, but he is doing a f phenomenal job of just playing the part and getting people to be interested in his fight. So, you know. I still don't – do I look at Jake Paul and be like, man, this guy is absolutely a future world champion of the sport? No, I, I don't look at that, to be honest with you. I don't. But it, is it like – is the guy picking the right names and the right matchups to A, progress his career, and B, get people interested in what he's doing? Like, look, I started out by saying, eh, like I don't love this, right, because I don't want to see Mike Tyson lose to Jake Paul. I don't want to see Mike Tyson go out there and be a shell of himself. You know what I mean? And it seems by all – look – on the bright side, this is this is announced with several months, right? This is not just a couple weeks that Mike Tyson has, uh, you know, to, to to get ready for this fight. So look, he is he does have the proper opportunity to get himself into actual fighting shape. The man can hit like a like like a truck. Still, I mean, you see the clip. Power is the He's, last thing to go. Power is the last thing to go. So you know, he does have the ability. So I'm not completely saying that. Look, I, I you know, Mike has no chance. He has the you know the cliche, the puncher's chance. He is the definition of the puncher's chance at this point. You know, I, I do worry a little bit because, you know, Mike Tyson in years has, has really started to do a lot of interviews and we've, and we've delved into his life, you know, and he's talked about how, like, this switch flips with him, you know, and, like, this evil comes out of him. And it seems like he's worked really hard to kind of get past all that evil that was within him. And so I kind of hope that this doesn't have some kind of lasting impact on him and, and the rest of his future career. But the only reason I say, ick, is not because I say, you know, I mean, Look, if Jake Paul can get somebody to sign the contract and he can get somebody to pay for the broadcast fees and the other person is making enough money that they're happy with it, who am I? If he passes the medicals and, and the commission's okay with it, then, then let's go. So I just I just have a I just have an idea that we're gonna see a, 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 I don't I think a lot of people are gonna be disappointed, unfortunately, in, in what they see. Here here I have two questions, right? And they don't need lengthy responses, but um number one, how does this get licensed? We're in Texas, baby. My home, my 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 home state. Uh, Would Nevada uh, license this? You think? You know, I mean, on name value, I'd say probably yes. But I, look, I with, with yeah, with the type of, with the type of money that's involved, the commission is going to be very uh, enthused. They're gonna they're they're gonna be leaning in the way of trying to find a way to make it happen. Now, look, it's not a typical fifty eight year old, right? It's right. fifty eight year old Mike. Tyson, you know what I mean? Now, uh, I know in, in, in the state of Nevada at 35 years old and older, and most states are this way, you have to go through additional medical testing once you've reached the age of 35. Um, I don't know the Texas regulations offhand, but I've got to imagine at 58, um, they're going to be asking some, you know, for some extended testing along the way. Um, it is an exhibition, so, you know, that no, may... No. Oh, 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 that's right. They, 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 they're not going with the exhibition route. I was assuming it was going to be an exhibition. Oh, man. Well, then they, they shouldn't be able to alleviate them. They should have full testing. So uh, we shall see. So my second question, and then I got to bring up uh, Rafael Cordero's interview. Uh, my next question is, will this be the most watched boxing event of all time? 
Now, listen, remember, non-pay-per-view, non-cable, Netflix, literally everybody has Netflix or they're using their friend's login. 100%. Uh, I, I would say, yeah. I would say, yeah, it is. I mean, the fact that nobody's going to no piss off so many more people about Jake Paul. The man is a genius. And wa watch, because it's going to be, the, it, it's absolutely going to be the most watched boxing event of all time because of the, you know, the distribution that Netflix has and the fact that it's not a pay-per-view and, and it's going to be crazy because if it does reach those numbers, I'm sure Netflix is going to put out some type of PR, you know, talking about how amazing it was and people are still going to call Jake Paul a liar. You know what I mean? They're going to be like, Jake Paul's a liar. Like, bro, I didn't even put this out. That's, that's Netflix PR that's telling you that. But yeah, I mean, with this distribution, it's absolutely going to be the most watched. Crazy. Isn't that insane to think? It is. It's, but it, again, you said it. Genius, man. They're making all the right moves. They're making all the right moves. And it just you know, again, make, it makes you want to hate the guy more because it's like he is, you know, I, I listen, assumingly that I don't think this, right, because I'm a fan. Because I'm a fan of, I, I recognize what he's doing and I applaud him for it, right? Um, now, like, do I want to see Mike Tyson win? Yeah, man, Mike Tyson is my guy. Of course, like, up. Of course I, want <laughs> I mean, him. that's not who doesn't want to see Mike win, right? That's that, even if you don't like Jake Paul, you have to like Mike Tyson more. <laughs> you, 100%. You know? But I just look at it and I'm like, you know, the guy, you know, YouTuber made his money and fame off of that, parlayed it into, into the next thing and parlay and parlay and parlay it. And guess what? No matter what, love him or hate him, you got to respect what he's doing because he's betting on himself every day of the week. And it takes so much balls to bet on yourself in high profile situations all the time. Like, I don't understand why there's the hate for the guy. Because if you look at it through that, I mean. I I agree with you, man. I I am wholeheartedly, you know. I mean, I'd love to sit here and debate for you, and make for an interesting argument, you know. What I mean, but I'm with you 100. percent I I feel like maybe we're in the minority of people on this yeah. because I have all the respect in the world for the guy. Now, if you want to sit here with me and have a conversation about where do you think Jake Paul stands, you know, in the in the rankings in boxing right now, that's a whole different argument. You know what I mean? Do I think he's yes. the greatest boxer on the planet right now? No, I don't think he's the greatest boxer on the planet. Do I think that he's trying to do the, all the right ways and like putting in the effort? It's, it's not like he's just showing up to the gym 30 minutes a day and being like, I'm just going to fake my way through this. Like he is legitimately committed to making himself a better boxer and he's doing his best. But as far as a marketer and just a businessman and, and his whole approach, I just don't see how you don't step back and applaud it. Because again, as soon as this fight was mentioned, you know, my first reaction was, oh, God, no. He's going to do it to us again. Exactly. But I know damn good and well I'm going to tune in. Like, there's like, like if, I mean, if you say, give me, come on, man. Seriously, there's no, if you like combat sports at all, there's no way, especially knowing it's not a pay per view, there's no way you're not tuning in. Of course I'm watching. How I many mean, interviews are you going to do getting ready for this fight? Probably. That'll be so interesting. Many. I bet there's going to be a bunch. Yeah, th this thing is going to get big time mainstream media attention, man. The eyeballs on this, this is going to blow anything out of the water that Jake Paul's ever been a part of. I need to put the respect on Mike Tyson back, though, right? This is what I'm doing. I'm putting the respect back on Mike Tyson because Rafael Cordero is his, his, his legendary. Well, I mean, not his trainer for the whole time, but legendary trainer. Yep. Now training Mike Tyson gave an interview. And I don't know what outlet it was or whatever, but I watched it. And, uh, you know, they're going ins and outs of, like, you know, breaking stuff down. And he's like, you know, we're anxious to see if Jake Paul, he's never had somebody that Bob and Weaves like Mike does. He's never had somebody who is always going to be moving forward. He's never had to deal with these things. Legitimate, right? And he goes, Jake Paul's training for a boxing match. Mike Tyson's training to kill. <laughs> and I said, oh, shit. They got me. <laughs> They got me. But that was a trainer. He goes, Mike Tyson training to kill. Afiyal Cordero is a legend, man. He's a great dude. And now, now he's – I mean, but but look, he's being honest. I mean, yeah. look, Mike Tyson is not getting – like like we said, like I'm glad Mike Tyson's getting paid. I'm sure Mike Tyson, the paycheck is nice, but Mike Tyson ain't fighting just for money. Like Mike Tyson is going out there to kill. And again, <laughs> I mean, early on, you know what I mean? Early on, like, look, if I could go like, you know – can we get 90 second rounds, maybe two minute rounds at the most? Can two we two minute rounds and a four round fight? Yeah, and that's what I four rounds, man. Two minute rounds, four rounds, like oh, because the longer this thing goes, I mean, look, it's just he's gonna slow down. But 
I don't know, man. I mean, this dude has been to the mountaintop. I mean, the the I mean, the legend of the sports. He's got the commitment to do it. Uh, I just ah, uh, uh, th- this is why you want to watch everything in my every everything in my brain. Eric, all I do is live combat sports my my whole life. That's all I do: eat, sleep, breathe, live. That's all I do: combat sports. And everything in my brain says this is going to look terrible. Jake Paul is going to win, and we're all going to be sad. But there's that one part in my heart that's going. Mike Tyson. Tyson, like, let's go. Catch this man with one of those hooks. Let's let's hit that peekaboo and come at him and nail him, bro. Like, come on. Dude, he's going to be cheering early. Touch that hook. (laughs) Jake Paul's head is just going to go. Oh, Logan Paul, he's going to have to drop his belt from outside, go and try and catch his brother as his head's flying out of the ring. I mean, we can hope, right? We can hope. We can hope. And that's not even because I hate Jake Paul. It's just just because of the night for 20 minutes. Yes. I just want to see Mike Tyson do it. Man. Okay. So, uh, Bellator coming up this weekend, Ireland. What we got? Yeah, listen. I mean, this is uh, the new the new era for Bellator, right? Under the PFL banner, we got two title fights at the top of it. It's going to be over in Belfast, Northern Ireland. Familiar name, Corey Anderson uh, against Northern Ireland's own Carl Moore with the vacant light heavyweight title on the line in the main events. That should be a, a good one in, in, in the main event. In the co-main event, I'm really excited about the co-main event. Patricio Pitbull is back looking to defend his belt. I mean, he's been the, the face of that company for a long time. Against Jeremy Kennedy, who's a challenger that's you know, been kind of climbing the ranks, steadily calling out for this opportunity. I think it's a very competitive matchup, man. I think the odds kind of indicate it too. Patricio Pitbull, not the uh, huge favorite, according to the odds makers, that you're used to seeing in a lot of his fights, despite the respect. So um, very, very good fight there in the co-main event. And you got some other names on there as, along the way. Fabian Edwards versus Aaron Jeffrey. Uh, James Gallagher versus Leandro Higo is in there. Tim Wilder against Manuel Sosa, the dangerous young up-and-coming Brazilian. Um, so there's some good matchups on there, and, and even the prelims have some recognizable names. I mean, uh, these rosters of, of Bellator and PFL, you know, all combined together are, are looking pretty good. The one thing we're waiting on is a broadcast partner, and I, I was told that something will be announced, something is lined up. We don't know where this is going to be seen yet, and I hate to be sitting here on Monday and telling you I don't know where we're going to be able to tune in and see this, but just look out for the news. Um, it, it, it will be something, you know, that's supposedly going to be announced this week. All right. Well, you mean to tell me John Morgan doesn't have the scoop yet? Ah. Uh, or do you <laughs> just can't stay? <laughs> I might have heard some things uh, from some people. It's, look, hopefully it gets done. If it, if it gets to that, if what I heard, but I, I wasn't able to confirm it, so I never report anything unless I'm able to double, triple confirm because you got to be 100%, man. But what the, the, the thing I heard, I'll just say, if it's if it's the place I heard and, and the, the deal I heard uh, gets done, um. I'm pretty excited about it. I like the partnership, so we'll uh, we'll see. Are you ready for March Madness? And no, I'm not talking about the March Madness on the basketball court. I'm talking about the real March Madness. Kansas City NCAA Wrestling Championships coming this weekend. Watch it on ESPN because I'm telling you, if you're not a wrestling fan, and most people out there aren't because it's kind of a fringe sport, Watch it. Yep. Watch it, and you will become a fan. I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it and because I'm telling you, no, there's no student athletes that work harder. They Some may work as, as hard, but nobody works harder than collegiate wrestlers. And I'm telling you, for my money, the most esteemed championship in college athletics to me is that NCAA Division I national wrestling champion because the blood sweat tears and grind you have to get to be able to call yourself a national champion in my opinion exceeds others and don't take my word for it even brock lesnar holds that as his highest esteem not ufc champion not wwe champion none of that ncaa division one national champion it's pretty incredible, Eric. And to answer your question, I mean, look, I was just saying, I got my brackets printed out right here. All right, that's that's how fired up I am. I ride the bracket. Hey, you know, I've, I've got highlighted. I've got little highlights on there for all the athletes that that earned uh, OW outstanding wrestling titles on CFSC Match Day during this season, right? Because I'm gonna be I'm gonna be cheering for them because I got to help produce and and be a part of that program. I, I'm more fired up this year than I ever have been. So I'm I'm glad you brought it up because I do think people 
man should tune in. It's it's going to be easy to watch. It kicks off on Thursday night on ESPN+. Plus. The whole thing is on ESPN+, Plus, including the finals, which will be on Saturday, uh, 6 p.m. Central Time. They'll be on ESPN proper as well. They'll be on the big network as well as ESPN+. Plus. But I agree with you, man. You know, as a combat sports fan, you know, mixed martial arts journalist for years and years, obviously was always very aware of of the NCAA tournament and you know who were the standouts and the standout programs and you know what athletes had had been standout accomplishments that made their move over to mixed martial arts but you know this past year being a part of the CFSC match day crew and 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 helping produce those events for UFC Fight Pass man it just gave me such much more appreciation even for really watching it up close and I agree with you if, if you haven't given it a shot before and you've got some time in your day to do it do it, man, because this this is big time right here. You're going to see the highest level. And, uh, man, it's it's an incredible sport within its own right. But, you know, still, there's the fan in me that looks at it and goes, dude, if you could get that guy some striking training. you I mean, there's a lot of athletes that can you make their way. You will future UFC champion this weekend. I can guarantee you that. 100%. 100% about it because it's, it's just the best base for it. I mean, as you said, the work athlete, the work ethic that these athletes have is unparalleled, right? But then you just take in the grappling base that they earn from this and, and the skills that they develop. I mean, it transitions perfectly to mixed martial arts. And as we're starting to see, man, the mixed martial arts community is embracing wrestling more. Wrestling is embracing mixed martial arts, man. For years and years, it was like, no, we, we got to keep these things separate, you know. But the wrestling community is starting to really see, like, no, listen, like, all of our guys can't go on and wrestle in the Olympics. All of our guys, you know, can't go on and be coaches at the Division One level. So let's, you know, fighting is another ath- another outlet for these athletes to continue. And, you know, a lot of them, you know, you know A, it's a, it's a financial opportunity, but B, they're just lifelong competitors, and they get done with wrestling in the NCAA, and they're like, "I'm not done yet." You know what I mean? Like, I gotta go. I'm, I know you see those those you know former Division One wrestlers come through the jujitsu room, right? Because they're just like, "Dude, I, I I can't stop. Like, I gotta do this. I just love this stuff." So, yes, Eric, I'm pumped up. I've never been more excited for the NCAA March Madness uh, than, than I ever have. Right? I am I am pumped up for it, man. I can't wait. <sighs> My last thing, and I know if you are listening to this show and you've listened for the 56 minutes that we've gone and you've got to this point, I know I am preaching to the choir. But if, but if, if I'm not, you have to realize college football, right? College basketball. Well, in college basketball, you had five wins over the course of three weeks. College football in the national title, you had. 16 games over the course of 18, 19 weeks when you get to the national champion, 20 weeks when you get to the national championship, right? College wrestling, you're going to have to have, I think it is six wins, six wins in basically 24 hours while making weight on two separate occasions. Crazy, man. That is insane. And for anybody to equate that with the others then you are delusional i agree it's it's such a it's just a phenomenal athletes as you said phenomenal conscious to be number one i mean to even be out there i was like all american status is huge i mean to be even to even be a placer you know what i mean to be there to to get on the podium but to win this thing my gosh the level of athlete that you are is incredible man and uh penn state heavily favored obviously they've got a, a ton of great athletes that's just a powerhouse program but uh, we will be cheering for uh, everybody that was a part of CFFC Match Day. That's for sure. Hey, I'm not a journalist in college wrestling. I can just straight out cheer. Like, I don't even have to feel bad about it, right? I can just pick people and I can cheer for them. Well, we should have our text messages open while we're watching. And I swear, I told you we need to have like a, you know, a bromance trip. Ne- let's let's book it now. Next yep. year. Next year. We're in. We're going next year. Yeah, we can already plan on now. We're going next year. We were kind of up in the air this year. Let's just book it next year. You can already put us down. We can start booking the hotel rooms. We're going to be there. Boom. All right. Great episode this week. No high profile real fights coming up, but yet we still went 58 minutes plus. I thought maybe you got the most high profile fight. <laughs> hey, listen, man. It's hard out here in the streets, man. You want to talk about D1 wrestler need to keep that competition? So do I. So do I. I. Love it. I love it. He's out here grinding, showing up to the show with black eyes. That's what's up. Hey, listen, man, the, the you know, lights, camera, action, the show must go on. I'm here day to day grinding. <laughs> yes, sir. That's Grind City Media, baby. Boom. Yeah, while talking about Mike Tyson. And, <laughs> oh, I'm grinding hard. But anyways, with that being said, we know your weekend, Apex Center, my weekend, just wrangling kids. 
For John Morgan, I'm Eric McMahon. Enjoy the fights.